But we were, in those days, were called Moors. M-O-O-R-S. That's what we were. That's our history. If you research what a Moor is, you'll research why they've stolen so much history from Egypt and brought it to uh, Greece and Rome and why in D.C. the buildings look so Greco-Roman. The reason being is because they were ours to begin with. And that knowledge goes all around the world, like with the pyramids. You know, like, that's what we did. And there is a certain group of people, I'm not going to say it out loud. There is a certain group of people that don't want us to come to that realization. That's why the black men are in the state that we are in today. Say it again. Okay? So that's a flag. Now, now, I'm not going to get into the whole history of the Moors, because I could go on forever about that. Y'all do your own research, just take heed to what I'm going to say to you. Men, M-E-N. Now this part is a, little, is a little more intuitive. I'm speaking more to my fellow black men with, with this one, because a lot of times, you know, we go to church, and we hear the preacher talking, and they'll give us the word, but we don't really know how to apply it to life and live off of it. You know, from a man's standpoint, but men know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. So I, I had to research that a little more so that I had to kind of give you examples, like, you know, like the whole of what to do in order to get closer to God. So as black men, to my black men, how can we live our lives so that we honor God, honor ourselves, and honor each other? Here are some of the simple laws that I give you from the Bible. Titus, chapter 2, verse 7. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity and dignity. Very simple. Just walk like a man. Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 29. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. What that means is when you do something and you love to do it, there is no better happiness than you can have. I got my job. I love my job with passion. Do folks see how much I love my job with passion? They know automatically that I am a man of God just because of the fact that I love what I do. And I do it the best of my abilities. And every day I try to do it better than I did the day before. So that's all the next thing. The thing is, you got to do something. Yes. If you don't do nothing, you'll never be happy. That's right. And you wonder why every year you're in the same position. Because you're not doing it. So you got to do something and love what you do. And that's, a, that's the simplest <laughs> okay. Psalm 37, chapter 37, verse 23. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. When you can say that, you know what, I woke up, I ain't have to worry about nobody coming at me about the money I owe. I ain't have to worry about the girl, she's going to catch this girl. And no, I'm just good. I'm when well, you can say that and honestly mean it inside, look in the mirror and know that you mean it, you know what God wants you to do. Because you're not going to want to do anything else. Like, you're just going to want to live right. That's how it is. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. That's why I meditate for, for those that ask me. Right. Ask me, ask me. <laughs> he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Yes. The wicked are not so, but are like chafe that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteousness. What that means is when you're doing good, you're not worried about what other people doing better. You 
man here. Because you're doing so good that you're not even trying to put the kind of vibrations into your mind. You're not trying to put the kind of thoughts into your consciousness. All you do is pray for him and keep going about your business. Because you know that what you're doing is right. And let me tell you, that's a lesson that took me a long time to learn. Because I always thought as a rapper, you know, when I was 18, I was a rapper, rapper, and that's what I wanted to do. I felt like I had to impress everybody. You know, so it was like, it finally got to a point where I was like, you know what, I don't have to impress anybody. I just need to take care of my family and make sure that I do good. And when somebody do bad against me, don't worry about it. The one thing I noticed when somebody do bad against you and you let God deal with it, they all, you always get the get back. Not to say get back. That's a, you know, not to say that you get back on it. But whenever somebody do something wrong against you and you let it go, look at that person like a year from now. And see what happens. Like, every time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> All right. We also have to treat our families better. Proverbs 31, 2 through 9. Do not give your strength to win your way to those who destroy kings. Talk about the wrong type of thing. Not just even the wrong Daniel. Way. I mean, give me that. It is not for kings, O Daniel. Will. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Meaning, control your indulgences. You can't be a man if you don't control your indulgences because a man is one who walks towards God. And if you don't control your indulgences, you can't walk towards God because you walk towards your indulgences. Say it. Don't control your indulgences. That's right. All right. Ephesians 5 25. I'm curious, ladies. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. 1 Peter 3 through 7. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs to the view of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. The reason we're going to get a lot of our prayers is to treat them with the wrong. And if you treat them with the right, then everything will be better. So, in closing, <laughs> so in closing, the honoring of our black men is what's needed in order to get the strengthening of our entire people together. Just as man needs women, women needs men. Therefore, it's honor our men. Do we approve?